Roy's been trying out Shape Magic Roadmaker. Hi, Roy. And uh, he wants to take the resources from this and from Carrera into Bryce to combine them and render them with the terrain. So, uh, in Bryce, let's launch Bryce. And we'll have a quick look at our resources while that's launching. We've got this image, which is uh, 1024 by 1094 color image that's going to be the ground texture. We've got a road and we've got an alpha. Now this is a PNG and I believe it's got an alpha associated with it so we may not need to use that and we've got this PNG height map which I believe is also 8-bit which means we're gonna have problems with steps in the train but we'll come to that in a second so in Bryce on the create shelf hold the control key down and click on the train that will bring in as a train in default gray the default resolution of this train is 512 by 512 pixels now our height map here is not square it's 1024 by 768 so I'll set it to the resolution of its horizontal dimension so we can take uh, advantage of the most resolution we've got in this so go into the uh, train editor by clicking on E and then in this little control here we can increase the resolution to massive 1024 by 1024 and then click on picture and navigate to where the height map is left click on that and open that that's our height map. The last thing we need to do in here is turn it to solid. So that's really all our train editor processes out of the way now, unless we're going to try and deal with the stepped problem, which we'll come to. So I'll check out of here, and I'm going to move the camera so we can get a look at this terrain from, I don't know, above or something like that. And uh, you can see how it looks. So I'll just move the camera around and give it a quick render. So. The reason this is looking uh, such high contrast is because it's got all these little steps on it because it's only an 8-bit terrain. So this is a little bit of a drawback. We'll do the texturing, then we'll come back to trying to deal with that issue. So now for the textures, go into the Material Lab and hold the Control key down and left-click on one of these uh, C column blobs here. So I'm going to use a Diffuse, so left-click on that and that opens us three. This one is going to act as our filter for the first two and so this is in this channel here, this is the alpha channel, we're going to have the alpha that selects between these first two. They're all going to be pictures at the moment anyway so I'm going to click on P for picture and you'll see our man Leo appears as per the instructions given by Dave Savage so essentially we'll follow this process now. We'll go into the texture source editor, click on an empty square and navigate to your image here this uh, autumn that's going to be the underlying image we'll check out of that now we're going to go back into the text source editor for this channel so left click on there click on an empty square and bring in our autumn road png and this has associated with it this alpha which is handy if we hadn't got an alpha that came in with it for example you might be in this position then you could load in an alpha that you generated separately and if it turns out to be the wrong way round, as this is, so it's making the road transparent, you can just left click on that and that'll make the alpha the right way around. That just inverts the alpha map there. The point with this is that for this channel, we're only going to use the image, but we can use this image again with the alpha associated with it to do the filtering. And so with this is just using the image here. This is just using the image here. This is going to be our filter channel. And at the moment, you can see the outline of this uh, fellow here, Leo, is doing our filtering. In fact, I'll switch this to actual selection so we can see this on the train. So you get an idea how this alpha channel works. So the road's being filtered where it's white and the black areas are where we're getting switched to this background color. So if we go into the texture source editor now and select our road, we can get the road texture where we want the road and the ground texture where we want the ground. So I'll just check out of here now and give that a quick render and you can see now we've got the road there I'm just going to rotate this terrain around so it's uh, facing us and we can get a closer look at what's going on the surface here so we've got these steps which are a little bit awkward and we've got our texture here which is not really very high resolution and, and neither is this one but the road we can't really do much about other than you could export it at a higher resolution but we can do something about the steps potentially and we can do something about this texture on the ground you can see the pixels in it you see so I was thinking what you could do here is swap it for one of Bryce's procedurals so if we go back into the texture editor here and instead of having a picture we switch it to a procedural texture and then if you 
hold shift key down, click on the name, you can go in the library and you could search out something. I'll, I'll pick out one of my own that I feel is uh, possibly appropriate for this, so if I can find it, it'll be in here somewhere. I never know. Made so many. Um, called Veg, there we go. Right, I'll pick one of these ones that looks like Fields Out, and then it's mapping mode. Uh, well, this is reflection, which isn't appropriate for this, so we'll have World Space, which means that it's at scale to the world rather than the object and then set this up so it looks appropriate in our preview so there's just sort of like field patterns there and because this now has procedural texture and I can take advantage of the bump mapping built into that so I'll just pop a blob in for bump height and turn the bumps don't want displacement that breaks it turn the bump up and uh, then I can use this procedural texture and I won't have the issue with seeing the pixels on the uh, terrain there so that's just a way of doing that. It's not uh, mandatory. Okay, right, but you can see that the, the ridges here are a little bit ugly. So if you can get your program to export in a higher resolution format, then you can use, as uh, Horo suggests here, here, whoops, no, here, uh, the, we can use this little program to convert it into a form that uh, Bryce can take advantage of. So I'll just show you how to get Horo's program. And instructions here as you just saw I've got uh, Horo's website open go to Bryce documents go to programs go to terrain and left click here on this program and uh, Windows will you know, I'm using Windows I suppose you might be using a different operating system but uh, it downloads it and then uh, in this case it warns you that it might be dangerous well I don't I want to keep this so I left click on the little arrow there and go keep and then uh, double click on that and that opens it in a window because it's a zip file. I'll have it in the middle of the monitor and drag it and drag and drop it into here so I can open it. So there's some instructions and there's the program. You just double click on that and it opens the program until I give you sure and then you can use it as per the instructions. So if you can get this in a high uh, bit resolution output, then you can produce a better quality height map that Brights can read. And if it's 16 bit, then you get very good results. If you haven't got that option with the program that you're using then uh, you can try filtering the terrain in a variety of ways so go in the terrain editor you can try smoothing it so you left click on that button and drag it to the right for uh, the level of smooth or just left click on it and it'll give it one smooth uh, same with these you have the option of controlling the level by left click holding and dragging the mouse left and right or just giving them one click and seeing the operation take place eroded uh, might disrupt the surface of the road but it's got a quite a strong effect which means it could get rid of the it'll change the character of your terrain but it'll get rid of your steps quite effectively you see the steps have vanished but it's also made the terrain a little bit crinkly where the road is which I suppose will be a bit inconvenient for drivers so um, if you just want to get back a step you can go control Z in here you can't use the undo button, that doesn't work, but you can use Control Z once. So if we were to do, say, uh, mounds, and a bit, bit too extreme, oh dear, Control Z will take you back a step. Alternatively, you can go out using the cross and then it won't apply anything. So smoothing, uh, a little bit of erosion, possibly, a little bit of sub plateaus, not too much. You might get away with that and it will take away the most obvious ridges but uh, you know, if you overdo it like here I've clearly overdone it again yes I've got rid of the ridges but I've also disrupted the surface of the road with terrains you'll also find a material consideration here if you're using uh, the, the bump effect that in the material options you have different bump modes and I find that a legacy bump works better with most terrains than enhanced bumps but not in all cases if you have high vertical cliffs then you can get some very good effects with enhanced bumps but if you've got sort of a low terrain then uh, it's probably not going to give you that much of an advantage so you can see the difference is subtle anyway I'm just being uh, being a bit picky over that so control Z uh, will take you back steps r repeatedly if you do it right and you've got the focus on the screen and you can see now we're back in our stepped mode somewhat that surface is crinkly if you th if you've gone too far you can always go into the train editor go to picture and just reload your height map and that will reset you anyway 
sometimes when you use Control z with terrains um, if you've made various changes you can end up with multiple terrains stacked on top of one another so just watch out for that because it can cause a bit of a problem then it'll certainly use up memory but essentially that's it that's how you can apply these resources to your train. The, the only other thing I suppose I should point out is if it was important that uh, it was scaled correctly then you can you can scale this so you could scale you could left click this control and scale the terrain so it fitted the proportions of the image or you can use the attributes to scale it very accurately so if this is the X Y and Z don't, um, don't worry too much about this, the Y value we're just to put in whatever proportions it was so it was 1024 uh, by uh, 768 I think let's see and I'll just zoom back a bit now because I made it rather large okay that's that's the correct way around and then you can just scale it back in oops uh, using one of these color controls I'll just left click on that and drag it and you see it's making it smaller drop it down with the arrow onto the surface and then if it's turned out rather flat I'll just move the camera back so you can see what's going on here you can see that the, there's more fields now and that's because that's world space so because the, the train's got larger the fields have got proportionally smaller compared with the train and you can just increase the height by getting hold of the control the Y control blob there that's what I was doing I should explain as I do these things shouldn't I but now it's in proportion to the original size and it's sort of interacting with the haze in the bright sky but as setting the scene up uh, to, to look like a realistic render is a different consideration from what we've been doing so I won't really uh, belabor that point I just wanted to uh, to cover the main aspects of uh, modifying the terrain modifying the material so if you need this material now if you need to spread the fields out a bit you go into the transformation tools and lower this value here and that'll spread them out again you can get an idea on this preview if you've got it on actual selection otherwise it might look like uh, well, current selection or a sphere or something like that depending on what you had last so actual selection is probably the most helpful in this case when dealing with the terrain because it shows you how the materials scale for that terrain so going on a bit now sorry about that that I hope will help answer your question and if you have any more questions then you know feel free to contact me and we'll go into further detail